Okay, so here we are, and we're going to look at how to burn or copy a disk using Nero 2016. Now, I realize when I first set up the computer, I forgot to put the desktop icons and the um, toolbar icons for the burning programs, which are Nero Burning ROM and Nero Express. And I'm not sure which one you were using before, so I'll put them both on there, but I'll show you all the different ways that you can go in to use this, and I apologize for that. Let me close that out. Alright, so if we go in, there are three ways we can go in. We can click into the launcher, either double clicking on the icon in the desktop or single clicking down in the taskbar, or we can go directly to either of the burning programs again by double clicking in the desktop or single clicking down in the toolbar. So first I'll show you how to do it through the launcher, although we probably won't use this much. Uh, so if we double click this you notice that we come up with this lovely new menu that they have um, and right here under the rip and burn category we see our two programs Nero Burning ROM or Nero Express we can use either one of these it really doesn't matter Nero Burning, Burning ROM is a little more advanced has more options Express normally will get us through everything we want to do and it's a lot easier especially for copying disks so that's one way and again if you click on either one of those I'll click on Express Now you'll see that Express Now loads I'm going to close it because it's a lot easier to ignore that whole thing and just go into whichever program we want to use so since it's easier let's start with Nero Express and I'm going to click it this time in the toolbar here it's going to come right up you notice the first thing on the left is how we, you know, what are we going to do here. Now, most of the time we're going to be dealing with audio CDs, so we're going to click on music. And the first option here is audio CD. That's really all we'll be using. We're not making jukebox audio CDs, DVDs, or Blu-rays. So we'll just stick with the standard audio CD. So we'll click that. And now we have our basic burn window. So to add tracks we're just going to click on add. We'll go down to files and click here because we're not going to use the Neuromedia media browser. So we click on files and we get the standard window. Now I happen to be in a directory that has some audio files here from the playing with feel DVD that I ripped. So I'm just going to select a bunch of these. Uh, I'll do all of Title 1 and Title 2 here. So I'm just going to highlight all of these and click Add. And you'll notice that it adds them and it comes back and indicates do I want to add any more. If I'm done, I can just hit Close. And I am for the purposes of this lesson, so I'm going to click Close here. And you'll see that we have all our tracks, our titles, artist and the track length. So assuming that's everything we want, we can decide do we want to normalize all audio files. I normally don't uh, because I like them the way they are from my original sources and I do my normalization on my own. You can click this if you want to. I generally leave it untouched. I do however often click no pause between audio tracks otherwise you get a two second gap and especially on discs where there's continuity or something like a ripped DVD where you have you know, lessons or licks going one to the other, I tend to not want that break in there. So I would generally always click the No Pause button. We'll go to Next. And now we'll select our current recorder. We have two drives to choose from, so just whichever our blank disk is in, or image recorder if we're going to burn it with something else later, we probably won't be doing that. So in this case I have it in the E drive. And from here we can add our title and our artist, whatever you want it to be. 
number of copies. Generally, we'll only be doing one. If you're doing more, you can change it. We don't really need to verify data on disk after burning unless, you know, you really want to be absolutely sure, but it's just added time that I generally feel is not really necessary. And this is grayed out because we don't have the secure disk surface scan. We don't need that. And when we're ready to go, we'll just click burn here. I'm not going to do that right now because I'm not actually making a disk here tonight, but that's how we would do it. So I'm going to close this. I don't want to save my project. And now I'm going to go back into Express and show you how to copy a disk. So we go back into Express, and you'll notice that down here at the very bottom it says Image Project Copy. If we click that, the first option here is to copy a disk. So we'll click that, and we have a very easy way to do this. This is why I prefer Express for this. We have a source drive, which in this case I'm going to use the D drive, which is where I have my source disk. My destination drive, since I have two drives, I'm going to use that as the E drive. Now, quick copy means we're going to go directly from the source to the destination with no throughput to the hard drive. Uh, that's really good on faster machines, not always a safe venture on slower machines, so we may want to unclick that. And what that does is it creates a temporary image file that will save to the hard drive in case there is a problem. It will actually rip the CD to the hard drive and then burn it from the hard drive. It takes a little longer but on a slower machine, such as the one in Studio D, it's probably a safer option. We can play around with that. You can try one on Quick Copy. If it works, then I would just use Quick Copy. If not, definitely use the image file. Writing speed, we can go any speed we want. Uh, obviously, the higher the number, the faster it's going to burn. If you want to be safe, generally a lower speed is advised. Uh, although some disks prefer higher speed, so I generally do anything from 24 all the way up to 48 or whatever the maximum speed is. Again, number of copies. We don't really need to verify the data. We're not going to use the secure disk surface scan. That's why it's grayed out. It warns us about copy protection. We don't need to worry about that most of the time. And then we just cl click copy, and it's going to go through, and we're going to be all set to go. It's as simple as that. So those are the two basic things we'll be doing with Express, which is quite possibly what you used before, and if not, it's a really easy way to do this. Now, the other option we have is the Neural Burning ROM, which again has a lot more features than Express, but also takes a little longer. But let me show you how to do both in that if we want to. So let's go down here, and we'll open Neural Burning ROM. Now we get a window similar to the one we had in Express, although in this case we have a few more options. Now, it defaults to UDF, which is a data disk. We don't want that most of the time, so we're going to come down here and we're going to hit Audio CD. We're going to get four windows uh, options up here, as you can see. The first one is Info, which just tells us what we're going to be creating. Right now we don't have anything, so that's really pointless. The Audio CD tab gives us these options which we've seen before. Again, I generally don't click normalize, but I do click no pause. Again, we can add the title and the artist if we want. We can even add copyright and production data if we want. All of those are optional. CDA options we don't have to worry about. We're not going to be doing anything with CDA. We're not going to worry about the read speeds. So don't worry about that. Just ignore all those things, leave them checked the way they are. They're really not going to affect anything we're doing. If you click on Burn, again, determine maximum speed we don't really need to worry about. Simulation, we're not going to be simulating the disk burn. We're just going to be doing it for real. Write, finalize disk. We definitely want to leave both of those checked. You know, that's going to create the disk. Finalize is going to make sure that it can be played on any player. Verify written data, again, generally a waste of time. That's grayed out, we don't need to worry about it. Write speed, again, whatever speed we want to go to. 
right method, generally best to do session at once. Tr they used to use track at once for audio CDs. Generally, if you do that, you're going to end up with those two second gaps, which I don't prefer. There's no reason not to use disk session at once, which is the default, and we don't want to use 96. I don't even know what that really does, but it's not, you know, that has no purpose for the audio CD. So just leave it as disk session at once. Again, number of copies. We do want buffer underrun protection. If for some reason the computer slows down, that's going to prevent it from creating a coaster that will be unplayable. We're not going to be using multiple recorders, so we can leave that unchecked. So at that point, we're going to click New. Come up with a nice big window here. We have our directories here of anything we want. And this. Again, here I am in that playing with field directory from the desktop. I can select any of the files I want. In this case, I'll just do the same ones I did before, Title 1 and Title 2. And I can just click and drag them over into this window. This is where all the files for the disk will be. You'll see it comes over here, and now I can see them all. I can see the track number, the name of the track, how long it is. Some of these get a little scrunched here. A pause, if I want one, I selected no pause, so these are all going to be zero seconds. Normalization, I don't generally check. If you want to, that's your choice. We're not using any filters. We don't have copy protection to worry about. And then these just show the start and end times for every track. You'll notice that the start time is always exactly the same as the previous end because we have no pause in between. This tells us our total time of the disk. We can see it down here. Now, if the total time goes above 80, we've gone over the capacity of the disk. I generally would stick to under 75. You get above 75, you have a risk of overwriting the table of contents on the burn, which is going to make the disk unplayable. I have done disks as full as 79 minutes and 50 seconds. Uh, how that worked, I have no idea. That was a stroke of luck. I do not recommend it. They generally say if you go above 78, you're taking a chance. And I would even say 75. So, once we have that and we're ready to go, we can either click the burn option up here on the top toolbar, or down in the bottom corner there's another burn now option. That will start the burn immediately. Now, I don't want to start it immediately, so if I go up here and click Burn, you notice I'm back at this Burn compilation window that we saw when we first set it up. Now, if I, I can change any of this that I don't want to, the info now shows the number of tracks I have. Again, I still have this option, and I have the Burn window. When I'm ready to go, I click Burn, and the process begins, and we're all set. I'm going to close this out, and one last thing, I'm going to show you how to do copying on Burning ROM, even though I generally would say it's not necessary, just use Express, it's a whole lot easier. But in case you do want to do it in Burning ROM, here's how we do it. We open up Burning ROM, and the first thing we see, we're not going to see anything here, so if we slide this down, past audio CD, mixed mode, CD extra, we see CD copy. We're going to click that. Now we're going to get four windows up here, four tabs, I mean. We click the Image tab. It's going to show, again, if we want to go through the hard drive, which is probably a safer bet for slower computers. This is where it's going to create the temporary image. We can browse and change that to whatever directory we want, or just leave it as the default, which is what I generally do unless there's a reason that we're going to be saving it later. And delete image file after disk copy is a good idea unless there's any particular reason you want to save the image. Generally we don't, it's just going to waste space, so probably best to delete it. The copy options on the fly is how we do it directly from source to destination. Again, if we want to use that hard drive image, we're going to uncheck that. If we think it's fast enough, 
we can do that. It says make sure the source disk is clean, the reading speed is at least double the writing speed. Generally that's going to be the case, or they're going to at least be equal, which is fine if you've got a good buffer. Here we can select our source drive. In this case I would choose the D drive because that's where I've put the source disk. The read speed can be the maximum or any speed we want. The read options. Now it says profile selection for whatever reason it defaults to video CD. I don't know why so we want to change that to audio CD because that's what we're copying. You know, were we copying a video? Sure, we'd leave it alone, but since 9 times out of 10, or 99% of the time we're going to be doing audio CDs, make sure to change that to audio CD. We can ignore the read errors. We can ignore the read errors in the audio tracks. This is really pointless because we're not using data tracks. We don't need to worry about the advanced options, the jitter correction, the ISRC. Finally, we get to the burn. We're going to choose write. Finalized disk obviously is going to be auto-checked because once you copied it, you're done. We don't need to do a simulation. We don't need to determine the maximum speed. We don't really need to verify the data. We're going to go to maximum. We're going to do disk at once. Number of copies. Buffer under run, yes. Now, the one thing I don't see here is what are we going to do for the other drive. Apparently, since we're doing on the fly, we're not doing on the fly, I don't know if it's going to use the other drive for the destination. This is why I generally don't copy within burning ROM, because it's a lot more knowledge to put in, it takes a lot more effort, and generally, you know, copy is simple. You know, I, I like to do my disk copies the same way I used to do my old tape copies. Put one in one side, put one in the other side, hit the buttons, boom, let it go. So I'm going to ignore this. I would instead, and if you ever are in Burning ROM and you want to switch over, you say this is just too much hassle, you'll notice the express <laughs> icon is right up in here. Just click it, boom it goes over to express. And again, if we do the copy here, it's just so much easier. Source, destination, do we want a quick copy or not? What speed do we want? How many copies? Boom. It can't be any simpler than that. So that's how we're going to do things in Nero. Uh, I apologize for the confusion and if this got a bit long-winded, but that's everything. We don't have to worry about it now. Hopefully this explains everything to you. If you have any more questions, you know where to reach me. Uh, just give me a call, shoot me an email, text me, whatever. And hopefully I didn't bore you too much, and hopefully I answered all your questions. So with that, I'm going to click this off now, and have a good night.